Okay guys, so hopefully you enjoyed. Uh, hopefully you'll enjoy the uh, nice little use I did for the L mic. Today I'm going to be doing a review on this little guy and I've been using it for a handful of months so I think I have some pretty good points on it and I think I'm pretty familiar with it. And overall I'm going to be discussing why I like it and what I like about it and what I don't like about it. So let's kick off with the pros of the L mic hatchet. So the first thing I have to say is it seems to be a very good hatchet. This isn't necessarily, you know, rocket science here, but certainly it seems to be well crafted. This is one of those Swedish hatchets, you know, axes that uh, seems to be very well constructed. It is kind of hand forged and, you know, everything is very handmade about it. The overall construction seems to be just fine. I've had no complaints or breakages with the handle, I've had no fitment issues or shifts. Um, the edge has stayed sharp for, you know, ever since I've used it and I've never really touched it up. It's still very sharp to this day and um, that really, you can really tell and it, I believe, in my opinion, really does make a good impact when you are trying to cut. You know, this definitely splits wood, especially green wood, apart very well, very fast and with relative ease being the fact that this is a hatchet, you know, obviously. It's not going to be the easiest or most, uh, you know, it's not going to be the fastest or easiest uh, of cutting tools to use, but it does a good job. And primarily, I've thrown it into the rolls and found it to work well in the rules of being a very good limber. So if I drop something with a heavier or larger axe, you know, I'll go in and save my muscles and, you know, save some fatigue and go in with the hatchet and it seems to just split off limbs very easily and do that work without a problem. It also is good at doing finer, more delicate tasks, things such as uh, feather sticking, it does very well. You can really, you know, get over the blade and use it and once again, it being so sharp, it does a pretty good job. And the other thing that I like to do with it, uh, the other two things I like to do with it is bit of trailblazing, nothing too serious or heavy duty, but you know, if there's a path that I need to cut and I just need to cut it, you know, this is a, a good tool to use. This is also a good tool to use for blazing a trail, which is when you leave, you know, little notches or little, you know, blazes on a tree to mark a trail. Uh, this is a good tool for that. And lastly, my favorite thing, probably of them all to use this tool for, is resource or natural resource collection. So like I've said in past videos about hatchets in general, uh, you know, there's a lot of times when a knife, you know, you're trying to reach something like chaga, you know, natural tree fungus, and your knife is just a bit, you know, it's just a bit too tall. So this kind of gives you that extended length to get up and really grab you know, chaga with ease. In addition, things such as chaga, you know, tend to be very hard, uh, uh, very, very hard and very brittle. So they're not very easy to collect with a knife. You can't just cut them off a tree. You usually have to break them off a tree with something like an ax or a hatchet like this. So it's a great little small tool to carry for natural resource collection, if that's, you know, what you're going for. But also, like I said, makes a very good companion for a larger ax, because your larger ax can drop a tree, and this can go in and take off the limbs. Easier than trying to wield an ax and take off small little limbs. So those are the pros. It seems to do all of those jobs that I've tasked it with relative ease. Of course, like I said, it still is a hatchet, so it's not the easiest thing to use, but for everything, relatively it does the job. Uh, so the pros are it works as a hatchet for me and it seems to be very high quality. One thing I will say that I definitely stands out for me is I do love the, these uh, sheaths. I think they do an excellent job and they're a little bit funky at first to get used to but they're fast. There's no you know fidgeting with buttons. It's a really nice easy uh, cord and what I like is that you can just you know, uh, fasten it like so, you know, you can tighten it all the way down and you can just snug it up like this and you have a great package right here. And, you know, it's not going to shift around that much. I mean, obviously all masks are going to have a little bit of play, but you know, it's not going to come off the blade like uh, Wetterling's hatchets were notorious for. <laughs> so, you know, it's a, it's a pretty great setup overall. And, you know, once again, if you are having any loose, you know, if it's too loose, you can always adjust this little cord here. And like I said, you can pull it tight like this. And, you know, that really actually 
snugs it down. So if it is too loose, you have a lot of control over that. So I love the sheath. It also has a little bit of a belt loop going on back here. And I this would take a very small belt, but what I like to do if I am going to use it is run paracord through it. And you can actually run it off of a baldric rig, similar to how I have my knife. And if you want to hatch it right there, then it's really convenient. So it's a great way to carry it. And I love that so many times with these uh, ax makers, you know, especially when they charge us so much money for an ax, you know, we get a great axe or an excellent axe with, you know, sometimes, maybe a lot of times, you know, a subpar sheath, especially when it came to wetterlings, you know, you got an excellent axe with a really subpar sheath. So I like this uh, mask, I should say, and it does a great job at protecting the axe and keeping you safe from the axe, or in this case, the hatchet. So I will say I definitely have a pro, that's a big pro for me. Um, like I said, the axe seems to be well constructed and in a pretty traditional way. So, going to the cons, I will say there are two primary cons for me, and that is price and uh, production, I guess I'll say. And that is, you know, this axe here, or sorry, I should say hatchet, is well over $100 for the all mic, and honestly, it's a pretty small hatchet, and I don't personally feel like it's completely worth the amount of money that it is. Now, I did pay for this thing in full, but I still don't feel like this is a hundred, you know, hundred thirty dollar, hundred twenty dollar hatchet because that is a lot of money. However, it is good, still good for what you're getting, but it is a lot of money, and I definitely ding it for the cost. The other thing I will say is production, and this is going to be subjective to everyone. Maybe you do. Maybe you don't mind it, maybe you mind it. Uh, you know, personally, I find the fitment to just be a little bit sloppy. You know, there are some gaps, and once again, it doesn't affect performance, but I feel like if you're paying over $100 for a hatchet, for a hatchet, you know, these types of things shouldn't be a problem. So, you know, there's some fitment issues with the head, or I should say, with the head to the handle up here by the eye. Like I said, there is some gap. It hasn't caused any, you know, fitment problems so far. It's still tight, but having any type of gap can lead to, you know, having some looseness there. So that's an issue in my opinion. And the other one is I just don't like the way they ground this blade. I think they, you know, chose to grind it in a very weird way that leads to having a grind that, you know, is tapers off or becomes very thick at your edges and is very thin toward the uh, middle. And what this leads to is, you know, having a weaker part of the blade here because you're thinning out the steel, that end contact, end contact there, and, you know, you have less effective cutting ends at your edges, right? Sorry, less cutting, less effective cutting edges at your ends, I should say. So, you know, personally, it's not a fan, I'm not a fan of it, and I will say once again, you know, I haven't noticed a huge performance hit because of the way it's ground. It still works, but I also feel that's because, you know, when you sharpen something to be incredibly sharp, you can kind of overlook design issues. However, if this thing doles out over the course of time, for whatever reason, you know, through use, um, I feel like it wouldn't perform as well with this particular type of grind. And uh, when I look at it, whenever I see a grind like this, I just kind of think, you know, what was this person thinking? You know, do they even know what, how an ax works? You know, do they understand, you know, that an ax is supposed to strike, you know, over the course of this whole blade. So it's important for it to be entirely straight, not this kind of curved geometry, because when you curve an edge like this, it doesn't really cut as well because your edge isn't making as much contact with the piece of wood you're trying to cut. So anyways, you know, these are, personal qualms I have with it, and once again, they don't get into the performance, or they don't decrease the performance that noticeably, but they are noticeable and uh, unfortunate. They're definite cons for me. So that is my opinion on the all mic. Now, in the end, I'm still gonna carry this. This is my primary hatchet that I own, so it's still gonna be carried, and uh, I'm not looking for a replacement to this per se. It you know does its job well enough. If I if I had to say what I recommend it, I would probably recommend it if you can't find a Grand First Brooks or Wetterlings, or if you can't find a Grand First Brooks or Wetterlings, this is still a great option. However, I would recommend taking a look 
at the Husqvarna hatchet, which is also 16 inches, and it's very similar to this. I think the only primary difference is it has a little bit different uh, mask on it, or sheath if you want to call it that. Uh, so it's just a little bit different, but for the most part, it's pretty much the same thing. The only difference is this is, you know, 120 plus dollars, and the Husky hatchet, if I remember correctly, is around like 40 bucks. So when there are other competitive options out there, I would encourage those over something like this. You know, this is by no means a bad hatchet, but I just think something like the Husqvarna does the same exact job for, you know, less than half the price. So anyways, guys, that is my opinion on the Holtzbrook Almike. It is, like I said, not a bad tool. I won't be replacing it, but I think there are better options out there for less money. Okay, guys, as always, God bless, and I'm out.